so good morning, and maybe I'm the commercial guy, and at least it might be considered as the person giving the commercial proposal. In fact, my objective is just to put on the table a suggestion and have you thinking about it and maybe reacting after it. What has changed on the AI uh, control and what could be the future can uh, be also uh, related to vaccines and vaccination. And this is basically the main point of my talk. Uh, until 2005, then we were considering avian influenza as with different compartments. There was the wild birds, there was the domestic birds, there was the intensive farming, uh, there was the food, and there was the possible consequences on uh, human health. But all these compartments were in the textbook with similar importance. Avian Influenza was really an avian disease, and we were not talking so much about uh, what happened after the 2005. After 2005, then we started to think of avian influenza as a disease of the humans. And this was because we had a big change in the way the, the disease was uh, handled. We had more human doctors, more human scientists coming in the picture, veterinary scientists, academics, authorities, regulatory people. They took the speech and then they started to explain that avian influenza, in fact, was a human drama. And this was very much emphasized uh, and uh, amplified by the media. So for a couple of years, the following years, then we were uh, looking at avian influenza as mainly an expected or possible source of pandemia. It would go from the wild birds to the domestic birds. It could go also to the intensive poultry farming and from there spreading to the humans, either directly or either by food or poultry derived products. It had uh, strong consequences on the way we look at the disease, the way we want to prevent the disease, and also the way we do uh, trading of poultry products. So we, step by step, went from the drama to dogmas. And the dogmas have evolved along the time, but the main dogmas were the following. The main uh, viruses are the H5 and the H7, whatever they are, LP, low pathogenic or highly pathogenic. These are the bad ones. We just forgot about the H9, we just forgot about what was ongoing in China for a couple of years. Uh, then the theory was that it would start with a low path and it would become high path. We forgot that 10 years before, it was just the reverse. A high path in Mexico, an uh, iPad became low path and remained low path for many years, and still now we have the H5N2 low path in Mexico. But this was Mexico, this was not the H5N1, so we just forgot this uh, story. We also developed the idea that if we have close contact between bird and humans, then there will be facilities, fa fatalities, sorry. And if we have more fatalities, then there will uh, be uh, the, the human to human transmission will occur, and then we will get the pandemia. And at that period of time, the question was not, are we going to have the pandemia or not? It was for sure that we were about to get the pandemia. The question was not if we were going to have it, the question was when. And you could read magazines, open TV, watch TV, and uh, buy books, and it was everywhere the same stories. And when, so when it came to controlling, there were consequences of this, and the dogmas were still there. Any poultry positive for H5 or H7 should be destroyed. All import from AI positive country should be banned. You can Im immediately imagine the consequences on trading. 
Only biosecurity is efficacious. Old style farming and live bird market should disappear without taking into consideration the huge consequences when it comes to local traditions and local behaviors and local economy. And definitely vaccination was not an option. This was the main uh, guideline. But some countries decided to vaccinate. Countries like Egypt, countries like uh, Indonesia, like Vietnam, like China. But to some extent, these countries were the bad countries. They were unable to control the H5N1 at the time it popped up. So these countries, they were uh, examples of failures. But it's interesting to come back to what is vaccination against avian influenza and really think about what we can expect from vaccination. If the highly pathogenic virus challenge the birds, then the birds will get diseased. They will get infected. It means that the virus will replicate and the birds will get sick. Then this virus will be shed, oropharyngeal rot and cloacal rot. And because of this, there will be the spreading. If we vaccinate the chickens, or if we vaccinate the ducks or any other poultry, also turkey, then you will make the birds more resistant. Doesn't mean that you will fully protect them. Because everything, this is biology, everything is depending on the dose, everything is depending on the way you infect the chickens. But you will make them more resistant. You will need a higher dose and it will be more unlikely to get the birds infected. You will also have an effect against the expression of the disease. The birds will be clinically protected. You will also reduce the shedding by cloacal rot and oropharyngeal rot. So if you have less birds infected, less virus in the environment, the spreading will be also reduced. So by increasing the resistance and lowering the spreading, you can help the control of the disease. This was the basis. But some countries decided to vaccinate, as I said before, so they did the field work. And 10 years after, they are still vaccinating. So this is extremely shaking. This is shaking for all of us. Why did it fail in these countries? It's not only because the disease was not eradicated, but it's also because other viruses popped up, new viruses. So instead of having to deal with just one, now we have to deal, in some countries, with many. How can we better control this? Why is vaccination not an option? I think it's in the mind of everyone, especially in the mind of the scientist. If you want to get an efficacious vaccine, the antigen that is in your vaccine must be homologous to the field strain that is going to challenge the birds. You can also make a consequence of this if you don't have a high antibody response against the field virus, you will get no protection. So the point of homology is critical. The second point is that the take of the vaccine is impaired by maternally derived antibody positive chickens. When the disease is present in a country, bird breeders, turkey breeders, even uh, duck breeders are also infected or vaccinated. So they transfer passive immunity to their uh, progeny and this passive immunity is interfering with your vaccination. So the vaccination is not easy and cannot be done at the early age. It means that vaccination needs to be done at the farm. And if it's done at the farm, it means that you have vaccination crews that need to go to the farms with the biosecurity consequences. But it also means that the coverage is variable, can be good, many times it's bad. Also because of the immunity that is induced by vaccine is short lasting, we need boost. So these vaccination crews will not come only once, but they will come several times. 
and the vaccination programs for long-living birds now in epidemic countries is including five or six injections. For, so five or six times you have to catch the birds and inject them. Biosecurity risk and uh, obviously if you need boost, it means that for some birds the immunity is not there anymore. And also the big objection is that if you start vaccinating, then you don't know where the field virus is. You cannot know easily, even scientifically, uh, uh, you cannot use this DIVA strategy that is uh, allowing us to know where the field virus is, even in vaccinated populations. But all these conclusions were coming from classical inactivated vaccines. The vaccines that were available for many years were of this category, either classical type inactivated vaccines or vaccines made from reverse genetic that is widely used and frequently used in China. So it's technique that is allowing you to make the kill vaccine homologous to the field strain, as long as you know which field strain is going to challenge the birds. There were also Newcastle vectors and fallpox vectors that were developed uh, to prevent avian influenza. But soon we realized, or the people using it realized, that these vectors are highly susceptible to maternally derived antibodies. So if you have MDA against Newcastle, if you have MDA against fallpox, then you have interference. And fallpox and Newcastle are very common in many countries. But you also have interference with maternally derived antibodies against the insert, the avian influenza component of these vector vaccines. So this was the situation. And this all generation of vaccines are ex is explaining why we had this list of objections. Now it's changing. And this is the first step of my proposal. We have developed a recombinant based on HVT, herpes virus of Turkey, with an insert which is the hemagglutinin. hemagglutinin and this var vaccine is showing strong differences compared to this old generation of vaccines. First one is that we have tested. It's an H5 uh, vaccine. We have tested it against many clades and subclades of the H5. And each time we have seen protection. It's not like it's protecting against this virus, not protecting against that one. Each time we have seen a very high significant protection. Not always 100% because again, we are in the biology, but almost always, always uh, uh, above 70%, many times 100%. It's an HVT vector, so it's not impaired by antibodies against HVT. And it's also not impaired by antibodies against avian influenza. It means that this vaccine will take, even if the birds are positive, against HVT, positive against avian influenza. And if you can apply it in the presence of maternally derived antibodies, it means that you can apply it in the hatchery. So no need to vaccinate the birds in the farms. You can induce protection as soon as the first day of age. HVT is an herpes virus. It's persisting lifelong in the vaccinated birds. It expresses the insert it means the immunity is also long-lasting. One shot on the first day of age, lifelong protection. And it's a vaccine that is containing only the hemagglutinin of the virus. So it, doesn't, it is not inducing antibodies against other components of the, of, the, of the avian influenza virus, the nucleoprotein, the matrix protein. So it means that you have ways to differentiate, first to check if the vaccine is taken or not, and in case of infection, to detect the birds that were infected. This is a bit the theory. In practical, I will show you what we can expect. And the last point was, OK, it was not successful in controlling the disease in many countries. But with this new generation, my question is, why not? And this is the question I would like you to take back home. 
If you vaccinate with this vaccine in the presence of MDA, you can detect maternally derived antibodies against, uh, against influenza the first uh, days of testing. You vaccinate and you have a nice development of antibody response using uh, inhibition of amaglutination. You can see that as soon as three weeks or four weeks, uh, you have a clear antibody response. So you can conclude that your vaccine is taking. If you do it in the absence of maternally derived antibodies, in country where the disease is not endemic, the take will be faster, the take will be stronger. In this experiment, the birds were challenged, were vaccinated or not, challenged, uh, vaccinated or not, in the presence of maternally derived antibodies or not. And you can see that as soon as 14 days of age, we get 100% protection, even in MDA-positive chickens. When you just get 20% in the controls, because they have MDA. If you challenge at a later age, no protection by MDA, but 100%. So it means that the protection is fast to occur. And this is also something that was surprising to us, but very significant. Something that is also extremely impressive is the difference that you have between this category of vaccines and the classical vaccines. In this experiment, chickens were either not vaccinated or vaccinated with the H5N2 Mexican type vaccine or the recombinant. And they were challenged with the 2007 strain, uh, clay 2.2, in Egypt. If there was no vaccine, there was no protection, but with a killed 100% with a recombinant uh, 100%. But then there was a new strain that was occurring in this country the, in 2008, and then people started to report no protection against this new kind of virus. And you can see that the efficacy of the kill vaccine fell down from 100% down to 0%. If you change the target, the vaccine is losing its efficacy. When the HVT H5 was still efficacious. And we have, and you will have this in this document, we have conducted many other experiments and we have experiments that are not listed there and that will be going to be published. Each time we have tested the vaccine against an H5 virus, highly pathogenic, we have found high level of protection. 100%, 100%, 90%, 80%. In layers in Egypt, we have been 60% in birds that were raised under, under uh, field conditions and uh, challenged by other diseases. But each time we have high level of protection. Okay. And you see that there's a, a, a long a list of clades. It was also demonstrated efficacious, efficacious against the H5N8, which is the virus that Holland had to fight against, and the Americans had to fight against as well. High mortality when the challenge dose is high, somewhat lower mortality when the challenge dose is low, full protection when the birds are vaccinated. You will see these tables in your document, reduction of the shedding at the level of the oropharyngeal root and cloacal root, considering both the amount of virus that is shed and also the percentage of birds that are shedding the virus. And after vaccination, using a specific nucleoprotein ELISA, you detect no antibody response in the vaccinated chickens because there is no nucleoprotein in the vaccine. After challenge, some birds demonstrate uh, antibody response. It means that these birds are allowing the virus to replicate, but not all the birds. So this has consequences on two points. First, the vaccine is protecting extremely well, blocking the replication. But second, if you want to monitor the vaccinated populations, then you need to go for significantly high number of chickens. And this is another experiment uh, that I will uh, drop, but it's also showing that only a few birds are replicating the virus 
and you need to go for significant number of samples to detect vaccinated and infected chickens. So these are my conclusion. Avian influenza is, and I believe that more and more people are looking at it like this today, avian influenza is primarily a disease of poultry, just like Newcastle, bronchitis, Marek disease, and so on, and so on. AIV is killing humans as of today. But we have to put in parallel the mortalities that we can see with rabies. It's a few hundred people against several hundred, several thousand of people. So the risk is there, but it should be kept in mind that it's not as big as it is in the news. We see more and more breaks with avian influenza with more and more new serotypes, and this is uh, uh, questioning. And also the last, uh, sorry, the last viruses that we have seen, the H5N8 in Europe, in Asia, the H5N8 and H5N2 in the in, uh, US, these viruses can be present in the waterfall population without creating too much damages to this population so that the, the waterfall populations can carry these viruses for longer distances, which making the risk much higher. I believe that vaccination could be used and should be used as a tool. If you increase the resistance to the infection, if you lower the spread in case of contamination, then you help the other measures that are the detection and eradication. The vaccine has been extensively proven to be efficacious against all tested H5, HP, AIV strains, Mortality, morbidity, and shedding are affected. The vaccine can be applied in the hatchery. It's covering uh, MDAs. It induces lifelong protection. It's traceable, and it's also uh, deviable. I don't know if the word is correct. It's not a perfect vaccine, but it's a good one. And I believe we have spent man a lot of time in investing on many areas related to avian influenza, there should be also investment on vaccines, vaccination, and detection. We could vaccinate systematically the poultry so that the risk of having breaks is lower. As of today, we wait for the breaks to occur to decide or not to vaccinate or at least to react. If we work on a, a vaccinated population, it will make probably life easier. This would protect the poultry, this would protect the farming, this would protect the economy and would protect also the humans. In countries where Newcastle is present, or Newcastle is considered as a risk, vaccination is systematic. Maybe the take home question is, why not uh, vaccinating the poultry? What are the countries where AI is not present or not at risk? Thank you for your attention, and I would like also to thank <laughs> would like also to thank my colleagues and also our partners for the work, the, the elements of the work that I have presented.